What's up fellow collectors, Pete Rockzilla back again for another review and today we're taking a look at the Sideshow 6 scale R2-D2 from Star Wars. Now I know Hot Toys is releasing a, a newer version of their R2-D2, but we all know that's probably not going to come out to either the end of this year or early next year. And this one right here, yeah it's a little cheaper in my opinion, like I haven't actually opened it yet but from what I heard from other people, it, it has like a cheaper feel compared to the Hot Toys version. It is less expensive than the Hot Toys version. But this one actually has the weathering that matches the display I have set up with my C-3PO, Endor, Luke, and Leia. So I needed R2-D2 to, to kind of make that display complete. So this is the reason why I was kind of looking forward to this. Now this, big shout out to Don Prime from Geeking Out. I actually won this in a contest that Don Prime was running in the group chat. And I, you know, I entered it. I never win this stuff. So I was like, yeah, might as well just give it a try. And to my surprise... Later on that day, I found out I actually won this, which was a freaking blessing in disguise because I was really tempted to pick this up. It was in my shopping cart at Sideshow just because I need to complete that shelf display and I need an R2-D2. So it all worked out in the long run. I'm happy I actually won this. I actually won something for once. And I'm actually happy to actually finally have this version or at least have a version of R2-D2 to complete my display. All right, let's get this review started. Dale. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the box before we get the figure out the box. And I do gotta say, Sideshow actually has a pretty decent, well, actually pretty good type boxes. Like, you know, they're pretty plain, but they're actually sleek and to the point. I do like the black and gray. And you get the six scale Sideshow right here. R2-D2 picture. Star Wars R2-D2. And in the bottom, you get the Star Wars logo. On the side over here, you get a Star Wars logo again with R2-D2, Star Wars logo, Star Wars logo, Disney at this time. And then in the back, you get a nice picture of the figure R2-D2 and a few, you know, legal information stuff there, serial bar. And that's it. Star Wars in the bottom again and Star Wars in the top. All right, let's go ahead and get this little droid out the box. So once you get the figure out the box, let's get the box out the way. You are agree with like a slip cover right here that has R2-D2 also. It has a nice little picture of the figure. I wish I could actually have a background diorama like that that actually had the lights and everything, but that would be pretty cool. But once you move the slip cover out the way, you have the instructions. And then you actually have the clamshell. That only, it's only one layer, so you have the R2-D2 figure right there. All the accessories he does come with. He does actually look a little bit bigger than I thought he would be. Uh, Just seeing it in here. I know on camera it might be different, but... I'm interested to see how he's going to look next to C-3PO. You got all the accessories there. But anyways, let's go ahead and take R2-D2 out and all the accessories. So we can take a closer look at everything he comes with in fine detail. And there we have R2-D2 laid out with all, all the accessories that come in the package. And I do got to say, this is, I'm not sure um, if this was like pre-owned or whatnot. But when I did open it, it was like little pieces of uh, like that raw sugar, like falling out a little bit. And I did notice a piece broken. So... Before we go ahead, let's look at that piece that's broken. So when this came out, this was actually just laying in the tray. So I did notice that this piece goes right here. And if you look real close, you see that broken piece right there. That goes right here. So this is supposed to be the cover that goes on top of his head, on top of the dome. But since mine is broken, it's basically loose there. So I'm going to have to glue that back on. So let's go ahead and take a look at R2-D2. I do like the way the dome looks. Now one thing I can say is looking at the figure directly, it does seem like this might be a little two-tone. Like the dome and then the actual body piece might be a little two-tone. I'm not sure if that's accurate. But it does, you know, it does feel flimsy when you pick it up. And, it, you know, it does feel like, like a little bit cheaper plastic, and the fact that, you know, like I said, pieces were broken off, it kind of leaves like a sour taste, but it still looks good for R2-D2 figure. I like the weathering down here that, you know, it looks all dirty and worn. And it looks like R2-D2. There's nothing, you know, I, I will see here that kind of says, well, who the heck is this? But, you know, it looks like R2-D2. So articulation wise, let's go ahead and take a look at articulation. The dome can move. You can do a full 360. And then the dome does come off. This is where you would put the batteries in right there. So basically it looks like the batteries are in there already. So you just pull that tab out. 
And then you just put this back in. Let's go ahead and lock this. You got to make sure these match up. If you look at these right here, make sure they match up. And just push it in. And there you go. Look, another piece that came loose. See? Just, I don't know, something. It feels a little flimsy about this. Anyways, these are articulation for the, for the dome, for the head. The legs can go pretty far back. I'm afraid of breaking this. So you can actually put the legs pretty far back, which you would never do. You could do, <laughs> I guess this is kind of like the droid type of big boot, the Hogan boot. So he could do that. So the legs go pretty far back. I want to be careful as I move this guy around. Uh, make sure you know that nothing comes off, nothing scrapes, nothing breaks. All right, so here's the articulation for that. These shoulder pieces are swappable according to the instructions. And then you do get the third leg down here. You're supposed to push down on that. And there you go. So that actually has articulation. This has articulation also too at the, I guess you want to call it the angles. It has articulation. So let's go ahead and move this back real quick. So you can take a close look at this third leg. And then this one does come out and it has the wheels underneath so he can row. And it, it kind of, you know, feels a little flimsy. Just the way it goes in there and everything. But yeah, so yeah, you basically have them rolling on all three. Kind of like that, see? So that, that looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and put that back in. Yeah, well, see what I'm saying? Oh, there goes pieces falling off, see what I'm saying? So like I said, just a little, little work needed for this R2-D2 unit. There we go, there we go, that's in. All right, so now that's fully in there. And then it does give you the option to use the lightsaber. The lightsaber does have a magnet at the end to kind of open some of the compartments. So, for instance, this one opens that one. You can open this compartment. And then, if I remember correctly, that one does open. And this is where you would put... Oops, whoop, whoop, dropping things. This one should open, too. I don't know how this one... Do oh, that's not the magnet side. Let's see. There we go. All right, so here is where you will put the pieces. So he does come with his the grappler. And if I remember correctly, the grappler does go in this slot right here. And then he does come with his computer terminal arm. And that one does go in here. And then he does come with his, was it, I think the power saver, power charger arm. And if I remember correctly, this one should go on this arm right here. And then last but not least, there is this piece right here that I'm not 100% sure what's it for. It looks like this may go here, you know? I don't know. This piece was just basically laying there. It looks like a magnetic end and it has like some kind of panel there. So I'm not 100% sure where that would go and why this arm will open up. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out, mess around with the figure more. So yep, so there goes the compartments that can open up and they close pretty simply. There you go. Don't really need a magnet to open, I mean to close them, but they do. it does help to open them. So there you go. And then he actually has, as you can see, this piece right here. This came out right here, so this is like his scanner. So you can actually have the scanner come out from the top of his head. That goes back in. And these are kind of a pain to get in there. And then he does have another panel right here. And this one supposedly is for the lightsaber, but I'm having issues with that one. I'm going to mess around with that one. See, as you can see, it's not closing back right correctly. You got to keep messing with it to get, there we go. And then he does have this one down here that you push down on and you'll hear it click. And that's, I guess, the, this is one of his other scanners. It was the life form scanner, I think, if I remember correctly, or something like that. So you do have that there. It does twist around and it goes back in there. You would hear it click once you put it in there. See, it's just these things. There we go. All right, so there you go. So there's R2-D2 with his articulation, some of the panels that can open. And let's go ahead and put them down and take a look at the accessories. So we did look at the arms already. This is the, let's go ahead and look at the lightsaber real quick. This is the lightsaber, loose lightsaber, as you can see. The hilt, there goes the magnet end. This is the thing that holds, like pours the drinks and holds the cups and everything. So this will basically go... It is articulated at some portions, but you want to be careful with it because it does feel a little flimsy and this plastic piece may come off easily. But this will normally plug in to the top of his head right here. And this is where you would put the stuff to basically serve the drinks. 
He does come with seven of these cups, the drinks. I just didn't want to put all four seven out there. They are, I think they're filled up to the same amount. And these look pretty cool. Looks like a little uh, Team and Team Fusion right there. <laughs> and then basically all seven of them will clip onto this tray. This is the tray that you will have. You see the slot there? You see the little peg there? Basically clip it in just like that. And this is how you attach all seven drinks. It's when you attach them to the tray. The way that works is basically these arms right here will clamp onto the up here. And then you would basically use that. If you see the two pegs right here on this tray and the two slots right there, you basically just put that in there and that's how you would have them. I would be, I'll do this one of my final displays. I mean, I'm sorry, final poses. So you get an idea, but it basically wants to give you guys an idea of how that works. And you get two of these right here. So obviously you need two, one for each shoulder. And then he does come with the table, which is, this is a nice piece. This is a, Nice little tail piece. It does, if you don't want to use the hologram, it does come with this this piece right here that you could just slide in right there. You know, kind of hold that, hide that hole right there. But if you want to use the hologram of Princess Leia, help me, Obi-Wan. You would just basically slide this in right there. It does come with batteries too. So you basically un un take that tab out. And the switch, I got to remember where the switch is. I guess it does it automatically. I, I look at the instructions. Basically, you put that in there and it will light up the hologram. More than likely, I'll probably give that a try. I'm not sure if I want to give that a try in the batteries. Um, because I don't want to unscrew it. So maybe I'll see. I'll give it a try. I may give it a try. So this is actually a nice piece, very light, not heavy at all. All right, so there's everything that R2D2 does come with. Went over all the arms. Here goes the arms real quick. Just take a quick look at the arms. There goes the grappling. Nice paint application on these. The computer terminal. And then this is like, I keep remember, this is like the power charging or charge, charge something, charge, power, something. That's the other one right there. All right, let's go ahead and get some size comparisons with R2-D2. Now that we got R2-D2 out for size comparison, let's go ahead and bring in some figures to give you a good size comparison. Just in case you have any of these other figures I'm going to bring out and you can see how R2-D2 will fit in your display. So let's go ahead and bring in Hot Toys Yoda. Mmm, yes. Now let's go ahead and bring another robot, and this is the 30DLX Optimus Prime. And last but not least, let's go ahead and bring in another Hot Toys, and keep it kind of with the old school Star Wars feel. Let's go ahead and bring in the Hot Toys Boba Fett. So there we go, four figures, good size comparison, just in case you have any of these in your collection. All right, let's go ahead and get the final thoughts and final poses. And now we have R2-D2 serving up drinks. He's serving up drinks to Tyrion. You know, guys know Tyrion likes the drinks in the woman. And then also Saitama. You can see Saitama there. It looks like he has a hangover as he's holding his head. But he's going to get one more drink for the road because, you know, he has to take care of some business before. You might as well feel nice before you got to take care of that business. So now, just a negative portion. That tray was a pain in the butt to get on there. As you can see there, as it's spinning here, it has these little clips that kind of like, they, they got pegs that kind of go into holes underneath the tray. And each tray is segmented and has its own clip and holes. So as I was putting the tray onto those shorter pieces, you can see there was one on the left kind of came off and broken, not broken half, but just came apart in half. So when I was basically trying to get it on there, it wouldn't fully flush into the, the slots where the pegs go into. So I'm not sure, if, if you look under there too, you'll see the other ones are not fully fleshed either. So I'm not sure if that's just the way they left it when they made their figure. That's just something in my opinion, that should have been done better. You should not be seeing those pegs under there. It should be fully flushed and it should not fall apart easy. So right now, I guarantee you, if I were to grab one of those cups off that tray, that tray will either fall in half or will fall apart in three pieces on the tray portion. So feels cheap, not too happy about that. The other portions of the accessories, that little arm that comes on the top of his head and grabs the drinks, that feels pretty sturdy. That feels good and looks good. And the actual cups with the drinks do look good when you have them all out. I do like that a lot. It's a pretty cool feature and a pretty cool accessory, but I could be with, I could live without that tray or maybe never using it again. I'm probably going to have to just glue those pieces on, to, on together so they won't come apart anymore. 
just going forward if I ever use this tray again. So just be warned. If you want to use a tray, be prepared for pieces falling apart. All right, so I'm kind of limited on the, basically the poses I can have R2-D2 in. He typically are, is just normally in two poses. So each of these final poses, I kind of wanted to get some of the more of the features like the that come with the figure kind of um, shown here. So right here, I was able to get the panels on the top of the head opened up. I was able to get the the charge arm and the computer terminal arm out there. Now the charge arm, the one on the left right there, you still see. Uh, that one has more articulation than the other two um, slots that, have, that you can plug in the arms in. So that one you basically will have to, you have to, there's a rod sticking upwards. You have to kind of like, like slide it forward and then push it down and it gives you the extended arm. So you can put the, I'm sorry, the extended rod so you can put the arm in. I'm still having issues with the portion that holds the lightsaber. So that's why I didn't really show it on this final pose. And everything else was still kind of, you know, somewhat a little finicky, but everything kind of opened up fine. I had to glue that top piece back on. Uh, once I glued it back on, it works perfectly now. It doesn't come off. It still opens up fine. Didn't use the battery option, like the batteries to kind of use the light up function just yet. Debating if I'm going to use that for the final pulse or not, just because I, I tested it out and it's not too bright. So I'm not sure if it's how, like how much it will show on camera. But on that, I mean, I mean, yeah, this, this, so far this figure feels, like I said, it feels somewhat finicky and cheap, but it's a good alternative for R2-D2 in your collection if you don't have one so far. All right, so I do have the battery feature on the actual hologram on, and it does pop up a little bit with the lights on. Uh, I'll show you real quick how it looks with the lights off. You can barely see it. I see a little dot right there. So that gives you an idea of how powerful that LED is. Not really much powerful, which I didn't expect it to be pretty powerful compared to the other accessories that kind of felt cheap with this figure. Um, and this is another reason why I didn't bother trying to use the light feature on the dome piece because I didn't want to unscrew that piece just to take the batteries back out. I just left a little uh, plastic piece in between there so I'd never have to worry about them being used or leaking, hopefully. Another thing I want to point out real quick is the little eye, the little eye pieces in the back of R2-D2's head, the front and the top, the little uh, eye center pieces there. Those pieces are actually articulated also. If you see as R2-D2 swings around, I did kind of articulate the one in the front kind of, so hopefully kind of look down a little bit more. So it look as if he's kind of looking at the hologram. And I want, of course, to have him displayed with C-3PO, which is the sideshow one as well. I do have the Hot Toys version of both of these pre-ordered. So I'm definitely looking forward to those, and I'm somewhat happy that they're kind of different versions of the of the actual characters. So I don't have two ver the same versions of the characters in my display and in my collection. So, like I said in the beginning, of one of the other portions of this review, this figure is pretty good. I have to admit, it looks like R2D2. It's bigger than I thought, and it feels decent. It's a very very good replacement or placeholder for R2D2 in your collection, but. I never got my hands on and I don't have the Hot Toys version. So I'm pretty sure with my experience with Hot Toys, the Hot Toys version is better and handles better. So if you can get the Hot Toys one, I would say get the Hot Toys one. But if you're looking for like a cheaper version to kind of hold you over and still, you know, kind of do the job of, of having a representation of R2-D2 in your collection, then the Sideshow one's not that bad. It's actually, you know, I it's good. I'm happy I have it. I'm happy I won it. But I guess that I was still on the fence of actually purchasing it because I did want to have somewhat this version of R2-D2 in my collection to go with my Endor, Luke, and Leia in my final display. Uh, currently in my collection right now. And I and I will say one more thing. Um, if you really, really want the best version of R2-D2, I know that the, the Machinations one is the best one out there from what I've heard from my collectors. And it actually has die cast and has a good weight to it. And has pretty cool light features. So I would say if you had to choose one, probably go for that one if you can still find it. I know he's still kind of hard to find nowadays. Um, but if you can, like I said, and if you don't, and you don't mind having a cheaper version just to have something in there, then the Sideshow one is the option to go. And also, if you can't wait for the Hot Toys one. All right, collectors. I'm so far I enjoyed this figure. Would I recommend purchasing it? Like I said, if you don't have R2-D2 in your collection, then yes, I would say, you know, it's probably a pretty good pick pickup. The character doesn't have much articulation. That's the way he was meant to be. So it's not like you're missing out on too much. Just the accessories don't feel that good. 
and then on the Hot Toys quality. But that's the review for now, fellas and ladies. I'll Please hit the like button, click the bell notification, and as always, collectors, keep collecting, stay safe, be good. Please subscribe. Dale.